there are just so many more weird people in this world than we originally thought. I mean, it, it, it's really eye-opening. There's no path for, a, you know, I, mean, I guess you work for him, a, a, a Jeb Bush kind of person. It's done. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's over. It's, it, 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 it's gone. Hello and welcome to the Bulwark Podcast. That was my pals at Galactic. It's Mardi Gras Day, so obviously I got James Carville. Uh, James, thanks so much for doing it. Oh, you know, Tim, good a fellow New Orleanian and Tiger fan. How can you say no? And we got to do it. it follows my fashion trends, okay? We, I, I didn't know I was a trendsetter. <laughs> <laughs> you, I, I was, I've been cop. I didn't really realize it. Actually, let's, you know, uh, what everybody was sending me this week? I want to start with this. So I wore the, you know, I, I guess it's like the basic, the basic Ken Mardi Gras shirt. You know, right. it's the rugby right. shirt with the Mardi Gras colors. I wore it on right. TV to be in spirit the other day. And everybody sends me this clip where you're wearing it from the war room. I just want to, let's just play it for him real quick. There's a simple doctrine outside of a, a person's love. The most sacred thing that they can give is their labor. And somehow or another along the way, we tend to forget that. And labor is a very precious thing that you have. And any time that you can combine labor with love, you've made a, a merger. James, you're talking about the love and the labor. Are you, and it seems like you're feeling that right now. You've got this YouTube page. You are out there. You are talking about young men's sexual frustration. You're talking about Donald Trump having syphilis. You're talking about how we need to talk about how he stinks. Talk to me about how you're you're uniting your labor and your love right now in in this yeah. phase of your career. Well, for uh, nine and thirteen and three six for sixteen years, I've taught once a week, and it, it helped focus me. So I don't teach anymore because it's just too much trouble, and I'm on the road a lot. So I started doing these YouTube videos, and it's kind of therapeutic, and it gives you a, a, a little time to explain what you're trying to say. And I try to do it as much as I can. You know, but humor is a kind of backdrop, if you will, but to try to explain to people just how screwed up things are in the country and just what a uniquely, I don't know what kind of character Donald Trump is, but I haven't gotten an adjective that can quite fit him yet, but I'm, I'm, I'm struggling, Tim. I'm struggling. <laughs> well, you're not struggling that much. I mean, I, I liked... I don't know if it was your latest, but one of your recent videos, you 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 went on a rant that I don't I don't completely agree with. Um, that that basically talked about what we've been doing in countering right. Trump is not really right. working. I guess right. my, my counter to that is like, well, I mean, he hasn't really he hasn't won an election in eight years, but right. but he's still around, so it's not working as well as we'd hoped. I, I guess we could agree on that. And you and and the case that you went forth is you were watching Animal House and you decided. Well, you tell, you tell the people. What have you decided well, when you start doing? So you're right. He stays at the kind of same level. Or he yeah. actually went from 46 to 47 between 2016 and 2017, which point. is kind of the same thing. Uh, and, uh, and we tried everything. You know, we tried his policy, his hypocrisy, his criminality, his uh, predatory attitude toward women, his deadbeat didn't pay bills. My favorite, I got to say. So he's going to say if Russia can bomb somebody that doesn't pay their NATO bill, this guy can't pay cash with a cosigner. Okay? He didn't pay anybody in his life. And, and he doesn't he, pay his plumber. He doesn't pay anybody. Pay anybody. So my point is he, he's at a level, but it doesn't get any worse. Actually, in the head-to-head, he's doing slightly better. And we've thrown everything at him. And so I was in Animal House, I was watching it, and they said, what's called for here is a really futile and stupid gesture. And the guy says, yeah, we just asked to do it. And I think that by mocking him and making fun of him over a period of time, that a lot of his view supporters are vested in him as this sort of flawed uh, sent by God, King Cyrus, King David kind of figure. And my point is, is King Cyrus, King David, to our knowledge, didn't have syphilis. 
or, 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 or didn't shit the diaper. So, uh, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I think that uh, so much of this is theological. I really do think so much of his supporters, he's viewed as, as a somewhat theological figure as much as a political figure. Yeah. I also liked your your little bit about about uh, the multiple choice question about the last year Trump saw his dick. Uh, I appreciated that. Um, on, on the theological, I wanted to get. Uh, I, I I do want to get back to the uh, to the NATO part and the foreign policy and do a little serious talk. But the just while we're talking strategy, uh, Mike Johnson, this guy, and you've done a lot on him. Uh, right. Talk about theological Christian nationalism. I've been thinking about this. Is is there? I I know that this is counterintuitive in some ways, since like Trump is the bigger figure and Trump has all these flaws. Like, how could being tied to Mike Johnson hurt Trump? But I've started to develop a theory that I think that it could. Like in the same way that that back when I was a Republican, we used to tie everybody to all you all your people to Nancy Pelosi, San Francisco values. You know, right, right, and and like. Mike Johnson is a Christian nationalist weirdo, and you've like leaned into this well. He's 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 fucking weird, right? And and it's not like nobody thinks Trump is that much of a zealot, right? On on these issues, and so like right. I think that a lot of these young men, you talk about young black men, young white men, listening to Joe Rogan and Theo Vaughn, that like you know kind of think it's funny to be for Trump. Is there not a way that we could start a campaign advertising to those people about how about how you know Mike Johnson is going to be inside their bedroom monitoring their porn usage if if uh, if the Republicans win everything next year might that not be more useful at this point than going after Trump? Well, you have to explain to people what Christian nationalists you, you, and they say, well, James, you're Christian, okay? And, you know, you're you're at a flag. You know, you're Christian national. I said, no, no, this is, and, and you got to explain who these people are. And they, they're everywhere, right? And it's a weird, I mean, like Jesus gave the Constitution to James Madison, and the First Amendment is only there to protect Christians. I mean, it's, it's yeah. the deeper you, but, but they have money, and Trump gets elected, he's going to turn the government over to him. They're going to sit down and make a deal. You steal whatever you want. Right. Okay. You, you, you amass all the power you want, and we're going to fill the government up. And the, the answer is, well, no one, that's never going to get a majority of the votes. What we know is you don't even need a majority. You really don't need, with all these multiple candidates, you know, remember, I, I'm sorry, I said Hitler got 33%. They said, well, James, you can't compare anything to Hitler. Was well, some supposed to forget that 1933 to 1945 ever existed? There's no lessons to learn there. There's nothing to remember. We just thought of eradicate that, erase that, white it out from history. And I don't think you can do that. And the, the lesson is you don't need close to a majority. Uh, look at the Supreme Court. I mean, for sure, Clarence Thomas is, I don't know, Lito, Barrett, maybe, you know, but it's just so crazy and so few people understand it. And Johnson is, he's all embedded in that crazy crap. And it came through Woody Jenkins, it came through Tony Perkins, it came yep. through Paul Pressler, a great crew. And the more that you study it and look at it, the more you come this sounds weird. People are going to think I'm goddamn crazy, but it's a real threat. It's a real, real ass threat. It is a real threat. And it just, in a, in some ways, I think, right, we've done well with the, you know, there's not a whole lot of juice left in the orange in the college educated suburban crowd, right? There's a few more people that we can win over that were freaked out by January 6th. And we got to still continue to push. I always talk about the husbands of the wives that have been wagging their finger at them for eight years. Like we can pull a couple more of those college educated white guys reading the Wall Street Journal over. But, but like getting to the non into the non college number, either, either working class whites or working class voters of color, like the Trump is going to be a dictator thing. Just isn't for whatever reason it's not scaring them, and that's why I was interested in your strategy about mocking him. I, I think that could work, and I also think that in, in some ways Mike Johnson scares them more, right? Like like this oh, Christian oh, nationalist stuff, right? Like, and that's why Doug Mastriano in Pennsylvania, you know, ran way below the Trump number in Pennsylvania because it's right. like that weirdo Christian nationalist stuff is way scarier to these working class voters <laughs> than kind of our high minded talk about liberal democracy, which I, which I care about. And so, I, you know, that's, I think that's the play with, with regards to Johnson. 
So the, during our time on opposing parties, there was a kind of unwritten rule. You let children are not combatants in any kind of way. Right. Yeah, you can put it in an ad and you're walking through the fall leaves with King Timaho and, you know, you throw a stick and that that's fine. And you can have, you know, little Ashley and Jason, whatever you got. So then, you know, your daughter, no one would, would, would like talk about your daughter like publicly or say anything. Right. It's just different business and who cares and my children the same way. He puts his children front and center. He takes a 13-year-old girl and publicly puts her signing a purity pledge yeah. with him standing next to her. And the research shows that these females that do this, it it, it messes them up. Yeah. Then he and the son, who's 17, monitor each other's computers with something called Covenant Eyes to make sure that neither one is watching porn. And if he's trying to keep that kid from jacking off, I'm going to tell you, dude, it ain't going to work. You, 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 you fight no losing battle. <laughs> I know it. It's not. It's, you know, the, the world is 0 for 6 million trying to do that. I think more and, than 6 million, but yeah. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> but, but he is, he, is, he is a weird, weird figure. He's been shaped by weird people. And that Bosha parish fundamental Christianity. And he says he talks to God all the time. Well, that God don't know how to count. He couldn't, that God, the God of Bullshit Parish fundamentalism can't count to 218. <laughs> now the South Louisiana, all knowing the omnipotent God could count to infinity. <laughs> but just, I, you know, God, God is a lot of different people to a lot of different things. But yeah. the guy literally says, everything I believe comes out the Bible. And I, I talk to God. And I, I think I believe him. Yeah. I think right. I, I I don't think this is some kind of show, you know, Trump would be evangelical, which almost right. hilarious yeah, every yeah. time. I think this guy is fundamentally, deeply, and profoundly screwed up. I, I, I do. And I, and I think this weird brand of Christianity and Christian nationalism really informs who he is. All right, we got to do a little news. It's the three year anniversary of uh, the vote to acquit Donald Trump. And to me, this is the date, February 13th, 2021, that created all these f-ing problems that we're in. Like, honestly, had, had, had 10 more Republicans had the balls to do what they wanted to do and convicted him, you know, we would have a relatively normal campaign right now between Ron DeSantis or someone like him who I don't like. And, you know, between Kamala Harris or somebody like her, because I don't know the Biden would have ran if he would have been convicted. Uh, instead, we're what we are, what we are. And so, uh, you know, here we are last night in the Senate. I, I feel like it's a nice uh, bookend to that. We have this vote about the aid for Ukraine, Israel and Taiwan. Uh, the Senate passes it. Uh, mm-hmm. Twenty two Republicans do the right thing which is down from 39 the last time they voted on it. So that's moving the wrong direction. But I just like how, you know, is there a way to navigate this world where like we just have to rely on the Democrats being the responsible ones every time? And, you know, how can you, you know, I know you're talking to a lot of these Senate candidates like message in about how it's like, it's these fucking guys fault that we're in this situation. So, all right. The difference between the Republicans and the Democrats is this. Republican voters are driving Republicans' politicians' behavior. Yeah. All right, Rubio was not like a clown or he wasn't anything like that as he came up through Florida politics and he got the Senate, okay? He, he was more conservative than I like. Now he's become a comical figure. And, and people say, why doesn't Rubio like stand up? Because Rubio is doing democracy. He's doing exactly what the, the rank and file Republican want him to do. The rank and file Democrat does not really want Biden to run for re-election. They will vote for him, but he's not being pushed by public opinion. Rubio is being pushed by public opinion. And there are just so many more weird people in this world than we originally thought. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's really eye-opening. There's no path for, a, uh, you know, I don't know, I guess you work for him, a, a Jeb Bush kind of person. It's done. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's over. It's, it, it, 
it, it's gone. And the Democrats are, you know, them, but a lot of things. But but it, but even like the ones that I don't really disagree with, like the the, the squad, or this. I think their views are kind of naive and silly, but they're not evil. I mean, they don't want to like bomb Denmark, <laughs> okay? Or, <laughs> or, and most or, of them are genuinely held. I mean, this is the thing about why we rat, why we rattle so much about Rubio, right? It's like, right. like I said, you know, thirty nine Republicans voted for Ukraine aid two years ago. Twenty two did last night. Seventeen people didn't change their mind about the threat of Putin, right? right. Seventeen people just. Well, 16, a couple of them lost, but but uh, umpteen people just folded oh. to the demands of these voters who have been pushed off the deep end by, you know, being inside Tucker Carlson media world 100 percent of the time. So I, I'm sure what they would tell you if you sit down and talk to them. Look, if I was the last vote, I would have voted for the eight. But, man, I go to the villages and they like club me. Yeah, and I don't. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't want to listen to that shit anymore. But Tim, you know, and and I knew we had a cushion. I, it was just a free vote. I, it, there's a difference between the the thirty eighth vote and the fifty first vote. That's a that's a that's a million miles in yeah. politics. And I I I suspect that's what he'd say. But I've watched him when he looked at him a little bit when he first ran for the Senate, and man, he was an impressive speaker. And he had yeah. a real way to he he, he weaved his ne- life's narrative into what he believed, and uh, I mean he was a real star at one time. It's then Trump has made him into just the comical figure, That's all he is right now. So I want to get into something you talked about earlier about the uh, the lockdown of the suburban females and their husbands. Yeah. The Democrats are hemorrhaging males. And yeah. particularly, uh, I, I, I detest this word, but males of color. Yeah. That, that first of all, everybody. you know, you live in New Orleans. If I went and there were like three black guys on a corner, which I spoke with chaplains a lot, okay? yeah. it's not a rare sight, guy. Right? Yeah, and no. I said, hey, fellas, how are things in the community of color? Come today? And say, what is this jive ass motherfucker talking about? <laughs> <laughs> this. It, That's a so great point. Talk they, normal is good advice. Yeah, generally. yeah. It's so you have these academics and these high end people that use words and tell tell these guys. So you're working all day changing tires in a tire shop in Kenner, and they don't. But don't watch football. Don't drink beer. Okay. Don't do all of. Don't eat hamburgers. And like lecturing to me about, and it turns them off. And, yeah. and we're losing a, a lot of black males, not because we, we want to protect Social Security and Medicare. That's not the reason we're losing them. We're not losing them because we want Medicaid. We're losing them because you have these preachy-ass people, like, talking down to them and telling them they have to use a language that they don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah. Well, so, we must I ban menthols vote. and we're banning all this stuff. I agree with that. That's why the Mike Johnson thing is more vulnerable to some, not, it's not that many, right? It's not, it's not half of the, of, of black guys, but like to some people, that's what the, that's the thing about the Trump versus Johnson thing, right? Johnson seems preaching weird. Trump doesn't. Right. And like, that well, is why if the liberal, if, you know, if the, if they feel like it's liberal society that, that is lecturing them, that Trump does f- seem a little bit like, a counter to that, which is obviously yeah. he's racist and fucking him and all that. But right. like that, like that's, the, uh, I think, a reasonable perception. Right. And it, it is. a re- and, and Trump has a little bit of that man against the system. F you, right. you know, I don't, I don't I don't talk like other politicians. And you, they're not like their parents or their grandparents that grew up and formed their political persona during the civil rights movement that, you know, saw the Democratic Party be eviscerated in the South and the few, the few whites that ever stood up for them were actually Democrats. And they had this allegiance with these younger people, the younger males in particularly, all they know is NPR lecturing to them or, or that, that ilk of, of Communities of color, BIPOC, LBGTQ. I want a, I want a letter of the alphabet. 
Everybody, what about C A? Coon ass. Coon okay. ass. Everybody's I'll, got a lot of I'll alphabet. I'll, I'll invite you point. in. I just solved that with the plus. I feel like with the plus, we throw with everybody in. That Never includes cone asses. That gets everybody. We count okay, them all. I'll get, all right, I'll get the plus sign. Okay. <laughs> you get the plus. We'll put yeah. you in. Mike Johnson doesn't get the plus, but you get it. No, I, I, I no. got to get you on. I know we're running out I of time. We're not that tight. I just got a message, so if, you, if we got a little bit longer. Okay, cool. Uh, uh, it's still Mardi Gras Day. Who knows what you got right. planned? Um, Robert Hur, I got to get your take on this on both, on, on two sides of it. First, how should the Democrats mesh this report? I, I saw you were pretty aggressive going after her. And I don't know. I've been of two minds about that. It's kind of like, does is, does that work? You know, it's one thing when James Carville's doing it, but when Democratic politicians are doing that, does that kind of feel like sour grapes? Or do you need to go on offense and, and turn this guy into a partisan hack? What, 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 right. what How should Democrats be handling let, let, let me start by asking you a question. Yeah. Who is the last Democratic special or independent counsel you ever heard of? Ken Starr, wasn't he a dem? No, no, <laughs> no. no. Okay, and, and that was we're going back to nineteen ninety nine. So can I think of one? Yeah. It is etched in marble in Washington. There shall be no Democratic investigations, and because the Republicans say, "Well, if you have a Democrat, we're not going to trust you." and the Democrats say, "Well, in order to be trusted, we have to have a Republican." It's like it, this is all. You Syrian catch twenty two sh. Okay, you, can, you you can't even make any sense of it. So, uh, he 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 writes his report. Of course, he's a he has this. In Merrick Garland, of course, wants to show Washington how objective he is, and so by doing that, he he yes, this, you know, Rehnquist's law clerk. All right, but uh, yeah. Or, and so we end up here. I, I do think, like, what, what what cracks me up about the Biden people, they send people out and they say, I was in a meeting with Biden, and he looked fine to me. And, and I, Well, I saw him on TV. He did not look fine to me. Oh, I'm going to believe somebody saying, well, it was a meeting of historians, and they said Biden was really engaged or what was going on. I see the guy somewhere between Cairo and Mexico City. And... People see that, and you you can't erase that image from people's minds. And I, they send a lot of people I like and I respect and are friends of mine to say, "Oh no, he's he's just fine." And then you see the visual, and you say, "No, he's not." Normal beliefs, you know. Somebody went in a White House meeting and said he his questions were crisp. Well, what I'm, what my lying eyes are, I'm actually watching. You brought this up. I, I, I want to circle back to her, but you brought this up. And so I wanted to play this. And, uh, and you know, because we've been talking about this a little bit the last few days at the Bulwark. And, you know, I, I've gotten some messages from some of our some of our fans and listeners. They're like, your Republican is showing. You're mentioning Joe Biden's age. So what now? Like, what do you do? Like, it's, what, what, how do you deal with it? It's February 13th. We've got this asshole that wants to end the democracy on the other side. What do is, what is the Biden people do now? What's happening tonight? New well, York I'm going to be at a Mardi Gras three. party. <laughs> oh, yeah. but, but New York three. It's exactly right. How you feel okay. about that, Tom Swanson? I, I don't. You know, I, I, I talk to people, and this well, it was it's, it's just tight. It's just, and you know, it's going to be bad weather, and who knows what that's going to affect. I, we don't. The insiders don't know a hell of a lot more than the outsiders, to be frank with you. But I mean, I text the post, I text the D triple C, I text to this guy, and. It, it obviously it's snowing and Dems have done really well in in kind of low turnout lost. elections. Right? We haven't yeah. we haven't lost an election since Dobbs. But if the, if the Dem loses this, who's a very good candidate by the way, yeah. in, in a district that Biden carried, uh, it's going to it, it'll set off a panic. It should set off a panic. And to say eighty five percent of the people think Biden is too old. I can't. I can't. It's all going to Republican thing. And I can't say, well, we need to pivot to the real issues. Let's 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 talk about it. no, it's a his age is a real issue. It you can't pivot from it. You can't distract from it. You can't say this is just Fox making this shit up, you know, it's the caravan or, or if it's you know, somebody a selfie going, stick. Some, yeah, selfie stick, a ba- bathroom, who's you you know, yeah. but that it's actually a legitimate issue 
that is on people's minds in a huge, not plurality, majority of Democrats. And you can't wish it away. It's not going anywhere. In, okay, in the, so what do you do? You hang a lantern, and JVL wrote about this just in the triad. You hang a lantern on it, you get him out there more, he jokes about it, like, or what else? What else you do you do? You just make fun of Trump and scare the shit out of people. That's the only thing, you, that's what you're down to. You're down to, like, if you don't do this, this is the end of the Constitution. And everybody says, I'm for that. Oh, I have a lot of friends. Oh, I've got to have access, James. If I got, you know, I got my. You know, you hear there's some reporters, you know, I got to have access. It's going to be the United States Constitution, paren, 1789-2027, paren, died of access. If I say something, I'm going to get cut out. If I say something, no one's going to return my call. If I say something, I, I can't get a judge. If I say something, I can't take my client to lunch at the White House. And I have to have access. And access is killing us. Not fortunately, I'm at a point in life. I don't give a shit. I've been to state dinners, but I, I, you're not going to. I wouldn't go if you invited me. It's too much trouble. <laughs> I think I'm going to go and get that fucking airplane or do it. But that's what that's where we are. And so the Democrats have decided that we're just going to hold hands and jump off this cliff together. And I'm like, I ain't holding your hand, dude. <laughs> you go ahead, you jump, but I'm going to stay up here. And, and it, it's been remarkable to watch this, but I, I, I do think if the Republican wins tonight, they'll, it is, it, of course, the journalists keep covering it. The White House keeps getting mad about it, but it, it's actually a real story. Yeah, <laughs> it's not yeah we'll see. I don't know that that's going to be the shakeup for you. I, I think don't the, I think the Democrats win tonight. Like you said, they've won everything. Low turnout elections. We've had this flip, right? Right, and there's this great, right. there's good analysis. My friends at Split Ticket, yeah. like I, it, Biden is winning among people that have ever voted in a midterm or a special yeah. election by four. Trump is winning with people that only show up in general elections by ten right now. In the latest New York Times polls, I mean that's just a total flip of how things were when you were coming up, right? With the low Tell lower me. light propensity voters would vote would vote Democrat, so, you know? And so if right. you have a snowy special election, it's probably going to favor the Dems. Yeah, I, I get, I don't know. I have no idea. I, All right. One I, more I, thing I, about let me, let me just wait. Yeah, let me ahead. back up and make one, 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 yeah, please. one point. So uh, what, what democratic pollsters and Biden people are down is going forward is, well, first of all, James, no one has a 50% approval rating politics anymore, which That's I think true. is kind of true. Yeah. And Biden gets unusually high number of somewhat disapprove. So I'm looking at the latest, NBC heart poll, which is the gold standard of Democratic poll. And if you want to shut an argument down, who took the poll, you'd say heart research. And everybody said, OK, well, that's accurate. So he has a 16 strong approval and a 49 strong disapproval and a 60 disapproval. Well, you're only down to 11 <laughs> percent. You start out with a 49 strong. So yeah. if you, let's say you, you, you're getting one third of 11. Well, that's three point two. OK, it, 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 it's that, that's the, the the what the Democrats are faced with going into this cycle is a headwind unlike anything I've ever seen. And people are, I don't think they're going to change their mind. I, I, I don't think, you know, if you if somebody you don't know and you say, well, you, you did the Harris Wofford race and you came back from being 48 points down. Yeah, people didn't know Harris and we introduced him, but they they already know. Biden. I don't know. It's, it's yeah. a mess. Go ahead. It's one of my favorite old McLaughlin group clips. They're guessing who's going to be the VP and they're going around. They're all shouting out names like Harris Wofford. You know, as a young person, I was like, I've never heard of any of these people. And that <laughs> ended up being Gore. Um, but uh, we could do a longer podcast. I guess if the Republic comes to an end, like you're predicting, uh, we can do a walk down memory lane from 1992 together sometime. Okay. Uh, I, I, um, I want to let you go soon. I just, one uh, last thing I want to circle back to on her. I like the thing that worries me is if you're the de I, I guess is the reaction to this right now. If you're the Democrats, you're already seeing this from normal Republicans that like we shouldn't follow the rules anymore either. 
Like, look at how Trump got away with this. If you're the Democrats now, Merrick Garland has us in this situation where he's appointing the Republican special counsel. He waited way too f-ing long to indict Trump. Like, isn't the lesson going forward that all of this shit is crumbling and that, that the Democrats need to play by the same rules? I and mean, is that too cynical? But I, like when I look at things, I just I wanted James Carville's take on that. I, I have easily we should play. Garland is, is just somebody that craves approval from legal elites. And that's just who he is. It, 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 and he... He's one of these people that thinks, well, if I if I appoint a Republican, then the Republicans will like me better. That's not going to happen. So the question is, do we need to be as tough and just sh- just say what you do, just take the page out of it? The truth of the matter is, the average Democratic voter would not allow that. They just wouldn't. If if I if if a candidate just got up and said the crazy sh- that Trump did and just made numbers up, that it, it actually they would report it, and that would shake suburban college women up they go well, you know we just can't go out and but my god you just can't go out and lie like that though yeah, right. that's not good for little jeffrey the soccer team is gonna you know to send in the wrong <laughs> that's a good instinct by the way yeah but yeah yeah it, it, so so the, but we don't what we never what never works is to do something to please them or think that that you can move uh principal conservative republicans you can't there are not that many of them it's an infinitesimal number of people. It, you know, We've already people, gotten a lot of them, by the way. We've yeah, got the we most have, of the, most of that infinitesimal number has already moved. Yeah, the entire bulwark is there's one percent left. Right. Yes, and, and so you, it doesn't. That's where the old, you know, every, every other word out of the Republican mouth was was Munich and appeasement. All right, well, we're, we're like at our own. The Democratic Party is its version of Munich and appeasement, and Mary Garland is the ultimate appeasement. I, I, to this day, he thinks that he can get them to like him. Or if he just shows how fair-minded he is, he doesn't open investigation, or he points her. Yeah, all right, no Democratic lawyers? I never, because apparently there's not, there hadn't been a Democratic special counsel in this goddamn century. And I always thought we had some pretty good lawyers on our side. <laughs> that was the that was the stereotype. All right, James, last thing. Okay. I'm going to let you go. It's all Mardi right. Gras day here. There's, so there's no sexual frustration in New Orleans, very little, no, at least, no. on, on this Tuesday, February 13th. But I was very jealous when I got the clip texted to me. I often get James Carville clips texted to me of yeah. you. Uh, I'm like, this is my, my goal, life goals to be, how old are you? 79? Yeah, 79. 79, to be 79 right. years old on CNN with John Berman talking about, well, let's just listen to it. I think most of these people are sexually inadequate and they go for all this crazy stuff. And I don't think, it's, and it's nothing strategic about something that stupid. It's, it's just real stupidity to, to believe something like that. James, final thoughts on the sexual frustration of young Republican men I, <laughs> and if there's anything we can do about it. I actually believe it. All right. And, and a lot of this is being driven and by incels. You know, I said, I said, when I asked some younger friends, I said, what, what the f- is the incel? And they said, well, it means that they inv- involuntarily <laughs> celebrate. And I said, well, does that mean like they can't get laid? Yeah. yeah. And that's, that, and that's coming from people who see Kelsey and they see her. She's obviously, she grew up in Berks County, Pennsylvania. I mean, I, that's, that's not, that's in, as middle America as you can get. Taylor Kelsey Swift. Went to the, yeah, Taylor Swift. Kelsey went to the University of Cincinnati. I mean, yeah. that's hardly, it's a great school, don't get me wrong. It, it saved that guy's life, the medical school, uh, from the bills. But that, that doesn't scream coastal elitism or anything no. like that. And, in the, and I do think, I think that they see these young people, they have fame, they have talent, they have money, they apparently are Having sex, I don't, I'm, I'm not too sure, but I suspect Looks like it. Are, indications of that. <laughs> and I think these people just go into a jealous rage. I, I really do. Because there's no, there's nothing that is, as I said, that, that she's 34. She looks like she's very well raised. 
she sits with his mother. Yeah, right. Or the Biden makes great chocolate chip cookies. I mean, <laughs> I mean, this is hardly some kind of elite food. <laughs> <laughs> it, it just cracks me up. And I used to, when I was young boys, like a young teenager, and I got mad at somebody in, in Carville. And I told my dad, it's just goddamn stupid, daddy. He said, son, growing up in Louisiana and being mad at stupidity is like getting mad at grass. And I changed my entire attitude as opposed to being frustrated by fools. I actually enjoy it. My wife would say, come down. I said, James, he loves to hang out with these fools. And I do because I find him massively entertaining. I, I really do. And I find smart people sometimes to be almost boring. But like, tell me about this Taylor Swift and how is this going to work out? He said, you don't understand. It's into overtime. Okay, how many times? What's the odds of that happening? All right, and then they, they block a, a extra point. Come on, that's all rigged. It's Roger Goodell, as you know, yeah. Bill Crystal, Lloyd Austin, Bill Crystal. everybody's yeah, doing you know, it. Of course, everybody's doing it. Yes. And, and <laughs> as opposed to like, are you fucking crazy? Yeah, tell me more. I want to know more yeah, about it. Yeah, let's, let's pick on this. I want to hear where you're going with this theory. All right, James. Well, hopefully right, your yeah. enjoyment doesn't lead to the end of our republic uh hopefully, I, I want to bring you back hope we can find some okay. ways to reach well, these fools i think we can no, no, reach no, the try. fools i think we'll it's try. doable all we'll right try. that okay. is going to be our challenge for the next yeah. nine months we got to win right, over we, some of the fools and we'll get our herb saint lunch and a moscow's dinner and all of the great things you all right, baby. All right happy right. carnival thank you so much okay.